Mali Sally, Coleraine. A community of close on 3,000 people has, like the rest of the country, been weathering the economic storm over the last year. This is the end of our time on the estate. Emma has set herself a challenge. You want to see him colour it? <laughs> We're doing this for six weeks to try and train about how to box. Her boxing debut is part of a fundraiser for charity. I think it's one and a half minutes, three rounds, and then whoever has the most face punches wins that fight. Face punches. Yeah, you heard me. I just seem to be like getting addicted to the adrenaline rush and set myself these crazy challenges. It makes it a wee bit more exciting. I'm not a sit in a sit at home, watch TV kind of person. I'm gonna get fit to <laughs> I'm thinking like, do you know what? When you're sitting there with all those people aren't you, I think adrenaline will kick in. And hopefully I'll keep remember to keep my guard up and just keep going. Because if you stop, like, it's not going to be a good scene, is it? I definitely am nervous. I am nervous now. Cross at the lights. Louise and her 11 year old son are out shopping for a uniform. Jordan's just about to start secondary school. Hi, are we just looking for a wee Colerain College blazer? Yes, are we needing the jumper at all? A jumper. Go on, I'll get a wee jumper to put on, all right. on him first. Can you take this wee top off for me a wee second? Looks just nice on you, son. That's scary watching them in a big uniform rather than the wee primary school one. Do you need a pee kit around at all? <clears throat> I'll leave that for another one. Nope, you're good. The uniform takes a large slice out of Louise's benefits. For the jumper and the blazer and everything could roughly be just under a hundred pound, but then adding the PE kit into it could make it around 150 to 180 or so. You get a grant, but it doesn't cover everything. Like you get 78 pound, that's supposed to buy PE kits, blazers, everything, but it doesn't. You just have to take it out of your money every week too, and work it that way. You know it's hard, but you get there. Shut up, you. Hey, take them ones off. Is that all you need then? Ah, that's it for now. Good man. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Comes to seventy-one. That's grand. My God. Very money, Jordan. Scary money. Scary money. I was about 15 when I met Noel. So I was. I was 13. Maybe 14. I remember I was younger, actually. After 21 years of marriage, Noel and Mandy are still trying to work out the secret to domestic bliss. Ups and downs, just, you know, up and down. Sometimes it pisses me off and love me a joiner and you can't get him to do anything, but then I just stop complaining and then 
he usually does on his own time. I decided I was putting the shower in two years ago, so I got the enclosure and the shower and everything else. He's sitting there for two years, but just hasn't got in yet. I'll be on before Christmas. What year? I haven't picked the year yet. She wouldn't sit in the bloody seat and it was cracking me up. I wasn't going to do it at all then. 23 year old Kyle has just asked his 16 year old girlfriend Annie to marry him. I didn't think it would happen so soon, so I didn't. And she said yes. I was sitting watching TV one night and he got up with a big smile on his face and I was like, Where are you going? And it, I followed him in and they lost the head then. They was like, no, go into the living room. So I went into the living room, I came in and got down on one knee and asked me to marry him. And I didn't know what to say, I asked him about 10 hundred times, was he, was he taking the piss out of me? But They're not rushing into tying the knot just yet. That'll happen in another 20 years. 20 to 25 years. I don't think we're just ready for marriage yet, like, but I'll we'll give that a few years. It'll take us a few years to see it for <laughs> Alcohol support worker Emma is back at work. She had to take some time off after one of her clients threatened to kill her. I think, you know, we dealt with it really well, but at the end of the day I had to say to myself, look, project must go on, I suppose the show must go on, and you can't just stop. I have a job to do and, you know, I'm not going to let other people suffer just because the actions of one person. And I suppose everything got sorted out quite quickly, you know, the bail conditions were set in place, restraining orders put in place, and I felt safe enough. But at the time when I got the messages, I was very frightened, of course. You know, I think it'd be inhuman of me to say I wasn't. The threat to her life jeopardised another life. Around that time, I was in about 10, 12 weeks pregnant, coming up to 12 weeks pregnant. And I kind of thought, well, it's not just me I have to worry about now, you know, at the end of the day. I'm not capable as I would have been, you know, before if something was just to happen to, I don't know, I suppose, I just, it, it did make you feel more vulnerable because you were in a totally different situation. Mandy's on her way to see daughter Tanya, who's just moved into her own council house on the estate. Just trying to get her settled and she hasn't been well ran off all week. Tanya! Are you up? Aaron, are you getting up? Her unemployed son Aaron sometimes stays over in Tanya's. It's five past nine or ten past. So it is. I had beer last night. Oh, that's why he's lying on it. He had beer last night, so he's lying on a wee bit. Why don't you go down in front of me? Tanya has severe diabetes and epilepsy. She needs daily visits from a health worker. Come on. But mum and dad check up on her every day too. Have you taken a insulin this morning? I took one. Right, that's good. This morning. This. The whole family worry about Tanya coping on her own. It's down still. Well, I'd lost my voice for a full year from last July. The stress maybe is calming herself down a wee bit since she's been a lot better. No, he calls up, just keep an eye, you know, when I'm not there. It's very good too. Well, Aaron, what are you for doing today, son? That's how she's been doing for me. So I kept me. Oh, it needs to be doing something, I think. If had a wee job, we a wee part-time job or something, would give them something to do. It's disheartening sometimes when you've no work and, you know, you get fed up just. But then there's no jobs really out there for young ones now. 
Not enough of everybody I know to so work. There's hundreds and for other reviews and things. It's hard to get a job. It's the same thing every day. You're doing the same thing. Same stuff on the TV as well. Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> Flat than I'm hot. <laughs> I just want to talk to someone about uh, a decision that was made on my housing benefit claim. Single mum Emma has just discovered the government has stopped paying her rent. I got a form last week to put in my last five pay stubs, which I did, and I got a letter back saying that I owe £200. <laughs> How has that changed so much when I just got a letter saying that I was eligible less than like, a few months ago? She's received a pay rise at her part-time job in a local cafe. But because she's earning an extra 30p an hour, she's no longer entitled to housing benefit. OK. All right, thanks. Bye. I love me. He was such a nice man, though, too. I didn't want to be like, because there are a bunch of idiots. And he's like, no, sorry, we don't appear to have that letter on file. And it's like, but I just sent it. And you just adjusted my claim. How do you not have that letter? That's so annoying. I am contributing to, you know, society and my community and things. I'm not just sitting at home saying, you know, give me free rent, give me a free house, you know, get, you'll pay my food and lodgings for me or anything like that. I'm not saying that. Like, I do want to work. And if they just stop putting up these frigging barriers and frustrating me to make me want to just quit my job, like... Go. Now that he's engaged, Kyle's keener than ever to get a job. Okay. But there's not that many about. I'm constantly doing things about the house. Just boredom really sometimes. And paint lying there, so I've done the loom and the orange, so now I have to change this orange to a different colour. Purple this time. I'll do that wall first, right? See how it's like. This sort of changed my life a wee bit. I was definitely settled down a bit, like, compared to what it used to be. I was about 19 or 20. Um, through depression and personality disorder and stuff, I was basically just wasn't happy with my life. So, I wanted it to end and then more than one occasion I was near dead like the very first time I tried to hang myself and I tried to kick the stepladder away from me but instead of the stepladder kicking away from me it just kind of slid along the ground and then I sort of was able to get it again and then I was like fuck that that's too hard it's no easy way out like so The most frightening thing was whenever I saw harm and I hit an artery and I lost so many pints of blood late. That was quite scary too. After I'd done it I used to get my dad to take me to the hospital, I'd get stitched up. And it was kind of stupid like what I put them through. There's always light at the end of the tunnel, so there is, there's always help there. You just have to want it. I don't do any stupid things anymore. There's too much to lose. As she's about to go off on maternity leave, Emma has to deal with some shattering news. I'm just trying and kind of to fill you in on what's going on. Um, I was already finishing then on Friday for maternity, but I won't be coming back. Um, they kind of let me know last week that unfortunately they're going to have to make me redundant. 
So really when I finish this week, that's it. <sighs> the charity she works for has been forced to close the entire project and Emma will be out of a job. There's no money in the fandom package around kind of sick leave, maternity leave, um, to, you know, even for money to pay somebody else to come in and cover me. So um, Suresh will be in a charity. Um, they're obviously not profit and they don't make a profit, so they don't have any kind of spare money about that they could use to cover those things. You know, it'll be scary to think that I'm telling people this this week and I don't know what kind of effects that's going to have on them for next week and I won't know because I'll not be here. Once Friday comes, my phone literally will be off and that's it. You have to break them butts. What butts? Them butts. Fifteen-year-old sure mm -hmm. Kelly Ann isn't thrilled by Brother Jordan's new school uniform. No, oh, it's alright. Right now, I've got set off. It's a harsh reminder of a new school year. Just know what's coming soon, but you know, I really can't be bothered. But don't waste you that. <laughs> Kellyanne is dreading another year in her own school uniform. I know I have to, so I'm just going to have to. But I don't want to, because I'll have to get up early again. Although I wasn't up to 12 the day, but I think it's different. Noel and Mandy have hit on a way of helping their two grown-up children. Aaron has become Tanya's official carer. I know Aaron's here, I'm at peace. And I'm the same. Tanya would rather have somebody she knows, <laughs> her family. I've said it's the door, down there and them. He'll have steady money every month. Nice to I get, like, through the week if I get another job or something. Not even if got somebody wants something done, I can go and do it. I don't some money. Mm -hmm. Aaron's going to look after 16 hours a week and he's going to come off the dole and get paid. He's going to get paid for it as a job for caring for it. So it gets him, it gets him off the... Really? The diabetes kind of thing is alright. It's the epilepsy and the walking shaking. Oh, I think it would be good for Aaron because, as I say, he's been looking after time, he's been helping us out anyway, so he may as well do the care and has bring a stranger in. And he's gonna, it's like going to be a job to him and he's only going to be doing it two nights a week. So the rest of the week is his own. There's probably other folk in some similar situations. You just never see it. Aye. I just borrow away. No, a basket, and that's just... Oh, I just... I'm 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 just... He's been peeing over that floor, I know, I see. They're just staying here. If I never happened to Noel, I don't know how I would cope trying to keep everything together. And having the same, I don't think he could do without me. <laughs> I said I could, but I don't think so. You know. Emma has to break her redundancy news to Martin, one of her neediest clients. I'm going off on Friday for maternity, mm -hmm. but then I got some bad news at the end of last week to say that I'll not be coming back. So that's you finished then? So that'll be me finished on Friday. But I'll miss you, but you're, you're mm -hmm. good, really. 
No. But I'm not going to get all emotional. <laughs> <laughs> You've helped you know, me a wide, so. wide lot over the years. I thought I knew everything, but I didn't, you know, but... I don't know how you, you're very smart. You taught me stuff as well, Martin. Uh, <laughs> a wee bit. Not much. My head isn't the same as it was. I felt like I yeah. had the way of the world on my shoulders. Because yeah. we've got through a lot since then. Yeah. Okay. One step at a time. I don't go down them streets anymore doing what I used to do. Yeah. You know, and the place is nice and relaxing, but the yeah. problem is if we get too relaxing, <laughs> I have to get out without get out and not bike and all yeah. that and keep myself going. No, things are looking good, aren't they? <laughs> They're getting there. Yeah. It all takes time. She's helped a lot of people and now it's time for her just to look after herself. You know? And the bump. Uh, <laughs> the wee Bobby. <laughs> I think if I was leaving him and if things weren't going well it would be it would be heartbreaking you know, having to go but because He's so well settled now, he's come on so much from where we started, he's a lot more support there than he did before and things are definitely on the way up, you kind of, I don't feel so bad I suppose about leaving. <laughs> Probably more emotional than I thought I would be. I think it's just because I'm finishing and like for the last two years this has been my life really. <laughs> Rab and his son Kyle are on a rare night out together. Oh, well, it's been years and years and you know, a long time, like. We've never really been out, you know what I mean, together. They're at the local church hall. This is the only time really on a Tuesday night I started to get the two of us together, you know what I mean? So, bit of a change. At least I know where he is. Did you pocket anything? It gets me out of the bush in here now. It gets you socialising with other people too. We have a lot of friends up through here as well. Like, it gets you practice your darts or practice full as well. Right. He must have been doing a lot of praying there to get that shot anyway. Well, I've seen the shots he was pulling out on. I was saying, God must have. God must have. <laughs> As I say, hey, God must be on his side all the time when he's pulling shots like that. Kyle's even started going to church on a Sunday. Well, definitely I'm glad to see him going here. I'm kind of still here at ten, half ten at night. You know what I mean? So he's enjoying it. I never thought that I would have seen Kyle going to a church on a Sunday or being in a, in a, like, a meeting like this here on a Tuesday night in the church hall. Because Kyle never appealed to me of doing that. But he has now changed Hopefully it's for the good, and he'll keep at it. He has proved me wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! After weeks of training, Emma is ready to test her boxing skills. I just want to prove to people, you know, I'm not a waste of space. I'm not, and I'm trying to do something better with my life. I guess I am a bit of a fighter. <laughs> Hopefully in a positive way, in a controlled environment. <laughs> Emma's managed to raise £500 for charity. I guess I, I don't really know anyone personally with, with disabilities, because that's who we're doing it for, we're doing it for main cap. And I said, I guess if my if my first daughter was still alive, that's who I'd be fighting for. So to me, I'll be thinking about her and I'll be fighting for her, you know, because she wouldn't be able to fight for herself, you know, and sadly she couldn't. So at least I'm going to go out there and I'm going to do it for her. Back of my mind, I'll do it in a positive way, you know, and not be sad about it. At least, you know, it's good. It's, it's good to keep, I like to keep talking about her because then you don't forget about her. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome into the ring.
After two rounds, the winner was decided on points, and the judges were unanimous. been the toughest of places to be in the teeth of an economic storm. By the end of our year on the estate, Jimmy and Denise have been forced to drop the price of their house again for the sake of their daughter Lauren. Martin continues to battle the booze without Emma. And Kyle remains on the lookout for a job. But the spirit of Bally Sally has shone brightly throughout. Look at that, isn't that lovely view? That is so nice. Emma started university and passed her first assignment with flying colours. Noel's on a DIY row. He's finally putting in that shower. Bath it. Sure am. So that's two projects on the job. Kitchen and bathroom. Mom. Bye bye. Oh God. It's a new chapter for Jordan. Be moving for two seconds because I need time. And Kellyanne has made a decision. Whenever I said to people, oh, start school Monday, they're like, I need going. I actually couldn't get to sleep till like after one o'clock. I know because my stomach was in knots. Like. And I know as soon as I go and you see, they'll be like, you have too much makeup on, take that eyebrow right, bar out, what you see. The bus is coming at 22. <gasps> I need a lighter. Thank God, relieved. They're all away. Good peace.